Right, hello and welcome. When it comes to expensive cars in Gran Turismo 7, they are a lot. And the Ferrari 330 P4 is a prime example of that. Coming in at what is currently 20 million credits and soon to actually increase above that. But what do you get for spending 20 million credits? Well, apart from the history that comes along with the car that we are gonna go over briefly, well, you get honestly what seems to be a really good car on paper because you get a naturally aspirated 4 litre V12 that produces 448 brake horsepower and has a 5 speed transmission mid engine rear wheel drive coming at 792 kgs that is capable of doing 195 miles per hour, which is 313.8 kilometers per hour bone stock. Now this is, even by modern day standards, a fast car and all of this comes in at 703.91 performance points in Gran Turismo 7. So how does it feel to actually be behind the wheel of this iconic Le Mans racer? So if we take it around Kyoto Driving Park, we will notice that coming up to the end of the straightaway we are doing over 260 km per hour, then when we slam on the brakes almost instantaneously we are slowed drastically then when you are exiting a corner you are going to be greeted with a bit of oversteer once you get onto the power but when it comes to actually taking corners and you want to be really hitting apex or apex by climbing up on the curb you might notice some stability issues once leaving that curb so yes when it comes to really getting up onto the apexes you do need to be careful because it can start bouncing around. So now when you're traveling at really high speeds coming up to a super sharp corner, well, you might actually need to brake a lot later than you think. Yes, the car is from 1967, but as I said, this vehicle has modern day performance. The way the vehicle accelerates, the way it just gains speed is modern power. This is nothing that I can say is, you know what, oh, it's so in the past, it's so just old, you can feel that the car is tired. If you drive this vehicle in bumper cam, like no car, you don't see it, you just see the track ahead of you, you'd swear you are in a brand new sports car, brand new supercar, because the car just responds like one. And that really shows you how far technology has come. And around Kyoto Driving Park, you are going to find yourself sitting lap times around the 1 minute 38 second mark bone stock. Which, look, isn't the fastest thing out there. But for a vehicle being bone stock, it is really fast. And that's because it had to be. As I said, this was a full on Le Mans racer. So, if we touch on the history of the Ferrari 330 P4, well, we see that this exact one that we have in game you see that number 21 on the side yeah this is the exact car that finished second overall at le mans 24 hour race in 1967 when we think of ferrari and motorsports you think of f1 however from the 50s and 60s they have also had a great success in sports car racing and the ferrari 330 p4 that we are driving today left its mark as one of the most beautiful cars to come out of the P-Series. It's the prototype series that was running at Le Mans back in the day. Now the P4 was developed by improving upon the 330 P3 which was a previous generation in order to defeat the iconic Ford GT40. Sadly even with an almost newly designed engine body modifications to improve the aerodynamics of the vehicle, the car just simply wasn't able to beat the famous and the infamous Ford GT40. But it was able to win the 24 hours of Daytona, the Monza 1000 km, as well as beating Porsche in the Sports Car World Championship. So yes, this Ferrari has a very strong impact when it comes to its racing pedigree. And keep in mind, there were only 4 of them ever produced. So, this kinda brings on to the fact of, you can see why this vehicle is costing 20 million credits. 
but even with this vehicle that assumes to be more than 20 million credits, you may think that is still a bit steep for a vehicle doing only 1 minute 38 second laps. Well, you ain't luck because we can actually improve this. Because now if we head on over to a tuning shop and add whatever necessary parts we can to the Ferrari 330p4, well then we are going to be left with 630 brake horsepower and 792 kg. So yes, we can improve the overall performance of the car. However, we cannot decrease the weight. We have no options when it comes to weight reduction. And talking about no options, we also have no options when it comes to visual customization. And rightfully so, who thinks you're going to be able to slap massive side skirts, front splitters, rear wings on an absolute piece of artwork? Even just putting any customization on this car kind of feels wrong. Hence why I didn't even put a livery. Now, there are liveries you can choose from, but personally, I just stuck with the one that the car came with. And with the vehicle being fully upgraded, well, it was such a big improvement. The vehicle is so much more responsive. The car is easy to put the power down with racing soft tires on and with max downforce on. We are almost at 800 performance points. This is a proper track weapon. So, unlike those other cars that cost insane amounts of money and the performance is honestly lackluster, that's not the case with this Ferrari. This Ferrari will have you on the edge of your seat just wanting more and more as you keep driving it. And the thing is, with this Ferrari, it just wants you to keep pushing it as hard as possible. It wants you to send it to its absolute limits and that's what I love about the Ferrari 330p4. Now yes, 20 million credits is a lot of money in Gran Turismo 7. But honestly, for the vehicles that cost 20 million credits, this is up there with one of the best of them. This is one of the vehicles that are required for the 3 legendary cars trophy in Gran Turismo 7. Yes, you have to purchase this car in order to get one of the trophies in order to complete, well, 100% complete the game. So, it is kind of a mandatory thing for you to own this vehicle in order for you to get the Platinum Trophy for Grand Turismo 7. But now, we cannot talk about Le Mans and not actually visit Le Mans. And the thing is, with this vehicle being a proper race car, well, uh, it's actually kind of good at money grinding because if we see that we head on over to Le Mans and we do the WTC 700, the vehicle's overall performance is fantastic because we see that the vehicle, with it being on fuel map level 6, you are easily able to do 4 minutes and 10 seconds around the circuit and even modern race cars struggle to get that time. And with the vehicle being on fuel map level 6, you only need to refuel after the fourth lap. The car, when it comes to fuel economy, it is extremely light, and honestly, it will kind of be a crime for this vehicle to be bad at Le Mans. So, with the vehicle being 20 million credits, yes, it does break the bank. And considering the fact when the game came out, the car is less than 10 million. Yeah, inflation has hit extremely hard with this Ferrari. So, uh, get your hands on it before it's too late. Honestly, I kind of see why this vehicle is worth the money. So, that may be a hot take, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section. So, with all this being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.